Welcome and welcome back grade 10 students. This is teacher Hazel and I will be your math teacher for today. Are you ready for our next lesson? At the end of this video, you will be able to find the common ratio of the given sequence. Are you ready? Before we start our lesson, let us have some activity entitled Fill Me Up. Directions Study the following patterns, answer its corresponding guide questions, and write your answers on your lecture notebook. Are you ready? Then let's start! Number 1. Observe the given figures on our right. On our right, we have set of persons affected by COVID-19. One person got infected and has in contact with two other persons. These two persons got infected also and without them knowing, they infected two other persons respectively. Each of the persons they come in contact with got infected also. Question. What have you noticed with the figure? Next. How many persons can infect COVID-19 patients? Afterwards, how many will there be in the next level? And lastly, what should we do in order to lessen the number of infected people by COVID-19? Observe the given figures on our right. We have number 2. On our right, we have 1 car, 3 cars, and 9 cars. Again, we have 1 car, 3 cars, and 9 cars. Question. What have you noticed with the number of cars after the other? Next, what number is multiplied to get the next number of cars? Lastly, if the number of cars is multiplied, what will happen to the traffic condition in the city? Number 3. Observe the given figures on our right. We have 1, 3, 9, 27, 81. Again, we have 1, 3, 9, 27, and 81. Question. What have you noticed with the number sequence? Next, what is the ratio of the first and second terms? How about the second and the third terms? Number four, we have negative one, four, negative 16, 64, and negative 256. Again, we have negative 1, 4, negative 16, 64, and negative 256. Question. What have you noticed with the signs of the sequence?
Again, what have we noticed with the signs of the sequence? Okay, next, what is the ratio of the first and second terms? How about the second and the third terms? Next, what is the next number after 256? Again, what number will be after 256? From our activity, observe that the activity illustrates a sequence where the ratio between any two consecutive terms is constant. The constant is called the common ratio and the said sequence is called a geometric sequence. Now what is geometric sequence? Geometric sequence is a sequence where each term after the first is obtained by multiplying the preceding term by a non-zero constant called the common ratio. Now what is common ratio? Common ratio is a constant multiplied to each of the terms of a geometric sequence to obtain the next term of the sequence. Let us have some examples and let's start with example 1. Determine whether the sequence is geometric by getting the ratio between two numbers in the sequence. Now, in this example, we need to determine the ratio to know whether the sequence is geometric. Let us have this one. 3, 15, 75, 375, and so on. Now, as mentioned a while ago, we need to determine the ratio. Now, how are we going to determine the ratio? simple. We just divide any term by its preceding term. So for example, we have 15 and we divide 15 by 3. We have 15 divided by 3. Now, we know that 15 divided by 3 is 5. So therefore, the ratio between these two terms is 5. Now, let us try if it is true also if we divide 75 divided by 15. Now, let us divide 75 divided by 15. Now, 75 divided by 15 is just equal to 5, which is common on our first two preceding terms. Now, let us try with 375 and 75. Let us divide 375 by 75. Now, if we divide 375 by 75, the answer will be 5. Thus, observe that the ratio between two preceding terms, any term by its preceding terms, rather, are common. So therefore, the sequence 3, 15, 75, 375, and so on is a geometric sequence. Now let us try another example having the same objective, getting the ratio to determine whether the sequence is geometric. We have 5 negative 1, 1 fifth, negative 1 over 25, 1 over 125, and so on. Now, the same process as we have done a while ago, we divide any term by its preceding term to get 
the ratio. Let's start with negative 1 divided by 5. So, if we have negative 1 divided by 5, let's make this one as a fraction. So, therefore, this one is also negative 1 divided, uh, negative 1 fifth rather. Now, let us proceed with the third term divided by its second term, which is 1 over 5 divided by negative 1. Observe that we have a fraction here and we have a whole number on its denominator. So, how are we going to get the answer? Simple, just get the reciprocal of the, fir, uh, of the number on the denominator and multiply it to our numerator which is 1 fifth. And the answer will be negative 1 fifth. Next, let us try to divide the fourth term and the third term. Now, let's have negative 1 over 25 divided by 1 fifth. Now, again, the same process also, we get the reciprocal of the number or the fraction in our denominator, we have um, 1 fifth becomes 5 over 1. Now, 5 over 1 times 1 over 25 gives us negative 5 over 25. And we know that the lowest term of negative 5 over 25 is just 1 fifth. Okay, next we have our fifth term and our fourth term. The same process, if we divide the fifth and fourth term, we get negative 1 over 5. Observe that the ratio between the terms are the same. So therefore, this sequence is geometric with the common ratio of negative 1 over 5. Now, let us try another example. We have 1, 2, 6, 24, 120, and so on. Now, the same process, we get the ratio to determine if it's geometric. Now, getting the ratio, we divide any term by its preceding term. Let's start with the second term divided by the first term. We have 2 over 1, and 2 over 1 is just equal to 2. Now, let's try the third and second term, which is 6 and 2, and we know that 6 divided by 2 is just equal to 3. Now, let's try uh, on our fourth term divided by our third term, which is 24 divided by 6. And we know that 24 divided by 6 is equal to 4. Now, let's try 120 divided by 24. What is 120 divided by 24 is? The answer is 5. Observe that the ratio between the terms of the given sequence are not the same. So therefore, there is no common ratio and the sequence is not geometric. Now, let us try another example. We have example 4. The same objective, we get the ratio to determine if the given sequence is geometric. Now, we have 4, negative 8, 16, negative 32, 64, and so on. Now, let's try. Uh, let us determine if the given sequence is geometric by dividing the second term and the first term. So we divide negative 8 by 4. We know that negative 8 divided by 4 is just negative 2. Now let's try to divide negative 60, uh, 16 rather 
divided by negative 8 and we know that 16 divided by negative 8 is just negative 2. Let's proceed with negative 32 and 16. Negative 32 and 16 divide those two numbers we get negative 2. And lastly, we have 64 divided by negative 32 and on 64 divided by negative 32 is just equal to negative 2. Observe that the ratio between the numbers are common. So therefore, the sequence is a geometric sequence. Now, do you have any questions? I would love to read your questions on the comment section below. Did you learn something? What have you learned? I would love to read what you have learned on the comment section below. Now, to know if you have learned something, let us have some activity entitled, Am I Geometric? Are you ready? Then let's start! Now, Direction. Tell whether the sequence is geometric or not. If the sequence is geometric, find its common ratio. Number one, we have one fourth, one half, one, two, and so on. Is it geometric or not? If it's geometric, then what will be its common ratio? Number 2, we have negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, and so on. Is the given sequence geometric? If it's geometric, then what will be its common ratio? Number 3, 7, negative 21, 63, and negative 189. Is the given sequence geometric? If it's geometric, what is the common ratio? Number 4, we have negative 2, 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, and so on. Now, is the given sequence geometric or not? If it's geometric, then what is its common ratio? Next, number 5, we have m squared, m raised to 6, m raised to 9, and so on. Is the given sequence geometric? If it's geometric, what is the common ratio? That's it! I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching and I will see you on our next lesson.